Good morning, guys. It is a great day to be in room 625. It is, it is, it is. Uh, for today, we are going to start our unit over linear equations and graphing points on a coordinate grid. Uh, I know I tried to rush through a bunch of stuff with you guys the day before we left for e-learning. And in that rush, I skipped the very first thing we had to do. I, I talked about the more complicated stuff. So today, we're going to kind of back it down a little bit and do some more of the more simplistic stuff. This uh, first five, six, seven slides on this, um, we did in sixth grade. You guys have seen this keynote before. So we're going to kind of go through part of it, not everything. And then we will get into the, uh, the meat and potatoes of what will be on your assignment for um, tomorrow. So let's look at it. Uh, so we've talked about coordinates. Um, it's the X and Y. It tells us which way to go left or right, up and down. The origin is where the X axis and the Y axis intersect. That's where we always start graphing at. It's located at zero, zero. And we've talked about the four quadrants. So uh, if you remember right, this is the Y axis. It's our vertical axis. Our horizontal axis is our X axis. And the point where they intersect, like we just said, is our origin. When we talk about uh, our quadrants, our quadrants we write in Roman numerals, and if you remember right, we said in sixth grade they make the letter C, and we write them in the correct order. So quadrant one is this quadrant right here, and it's quadrant one because it's the only quadrant that's completely positive. If you think back to elementary school, you started graphing on graphs that looked like this, and were positive in that direction and positive in that direction, and if you can kind of picture that, that is our first quadrant. Second quadrant is located over here, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So those are the four different quadrants of a coordinate plane. So next we are going to graph some ordered pairs. When we graph ordered pairs, they come in a set of parentheses. Our first pair, or our first number in a pair, is always our x coordinate, and the second number in our pair is our y coordinate. The x coordinate tells us which way to go. Uh, it tells us to go left, or right, we go left if it's negative, right if it's positive. The y coordinate tells us to go up or down, up if it's positive, left or down if it's negative. So when we graph these, we always start at the origin, and then we uh, move left or right first, depending if it's positive or negative, and then we move up or down. So my first one is three comma two. So I'm gonna move right three because it's positive, one, two, three, and then up to one, two. I make a dot right there, and that is my point A. B is negative 1 comes first. My x coordinate is negative, so that tells me I need to move to the left. So I'm going to go left 1 and then up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here is point B. My C coordinate is both negative, negative 4 and negative 3. So I'm going to go left 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3. That is my C coordinate. D is positive negative, so right down, positive 6, so I go 6 on the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that would be point D. E is located at 0, 0, and like the previous slide, that is our origin, so that's point E. Point F is at 3, 0, so that means move right 3, up or down 0, so right there would be point F. And point G is located at 0, negative 6, so I move left or right 0, and down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that would be point G. This hopefully is a review. Um, we'll kind of talk about it more as we do it, um, but hopefully it makes some sense at this point. Let's move on uh, past a few things when we talk about the intercepts, and this is what your assignment is over. Uh, we briefly talked about it when I said I was going to throw a pass from me to Shy Rock and Whitley intercepted it. Uh, an x-intercept is the x-coordinate of a point where the graph crosses the x-axis. A y-intercept of the graph is where the y-coordinate crosses the y-axis. To find the x-intercept of the graph of a linear equation, find the value of x when y equals 0. And to find the y-intercept of the graph, find the value of y when x equals 0. So we'll come back to that in a second. But first, let's graph it given the intercept. This tells us that our linear equation, our line, crosses the x-axis, the intersection of the x-axis, at 4. So when I find the x-axis, put a 4. It crosses the y-axis at negative 2. I put a negative 2. And then I will connect those lines the best I can. And that is my graph there. 
On the second one, it has an x intercept of positive 3, so on the x axis, I go to 3. And on the y axis, or the y intercept, it is 2, so I go up 2. And there is my line right there. So that's how you graph lines if you're given the intercepts. However, uh, most of the time we will not be given the intercepts. We'll have to figure out the intercepts ourselves given the equation. So let's get past that. So here are two linear equations. Uh, neither one's in slope intercept form, but we are going to solve these finding the uh, intercepts. So to find the x intercept, to find the x intercept, that's when I have to have my y equaling 0. So that means is I'm going to plug y or 0 in for my y here. So I'm going to say x minus 2, y equals 0, equals 6. So I have x minus 2y, but y equals 0. And I, I'm, picking, I'm making y equals 0. That way it's my x intercept equals 6. Well, that's the same as x equals 6. So I know my x-intercept is right here. If you think about the point, what is this point? This point is 6, 0. What's the y value at this point? 0. And that's why we plug 0 in for y is because we know wherever it crosses the y, or, sorry, wherever it crosses the x-axis at, it's not up above it or below it, so its y value has to be 0. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my y-axis my y-intercept, but this time I'm going to make uh, my x equal 0. So for my y-intercept, I'm going to make my x equal to 0. So now it's going to be 0 minus 2y equals 6, because x is now 0. That's the same as negative 2y equals 6, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, so we get y equals negative 3. So I go to my y-axis, there's my negative 3. What's that point there? Well, that point is at uh, 0, negative 3, which makes sense because my x value is 0. So now to complete this, complete this, I'm just going to graph uh, that line by connecting my two points the best I can. And there is the line of the equation x minus 2y equals 6 by finding the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Um, Next one says 3x minus 2y equals negative 2. Uh, to find our x-intercept, I'm going to do it, I guess I'll do it right here. If I find up x-intercept, we have to make y equal 0. So 3x minus 2 times 0 equals negative 2. That's what cancels out. It's going to be 3x equals negative 2 divided by 3 divided by 3 x equals a negative two-thirds. So I know my x-intercept is at negative two-thirds, so I'll go to negative two-thirds, just about right there, closer to the negative one than the halfway point, or between that negative one and the halfway point. And to find my y-intercept, I make x equals zero. So I'll be left with three times zero minus two y equals negative 2. That's what cancel out to be just 0, or multiply by 0. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. y equals a positive 1. So I go to my y-axis, put a 1 there, and I connect my lines. And that is the point of, or the point in the line of 3x minus 2y equals negative 2. Uh, and I found that by finding the intercepts. Okay. So, once again, to find the intercepts of a graph, uh, to find the y-intercept, you set x equal to 0. To find the x-intercept, you uh, put y equals to 0. Okay. Let's try a couple more. So, on this one, we have y equals x plus 3. So, to find my... Uh, I'll do it up here. To find my x-intercept, I'm going to set y equal to 0. So it's going to be 0 equals x plus 3. Well, I have to get my variable on one side and my constants on the other, so I need to subtract 3 from both sides. 
and we're left with negative 3 equals x or x equals negative 3. So I know my x uh, intercept is at negative 3. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my y intercept. However, I'm going to set my x to be 0. So it's going to be y equals 0 plus 3, or just y equals 3. So that's my y intercept. Now I'll connect my dots. And there is the line of the equation y equals x plus 3. And I know we talked very, very little about slope intercept form before we left. Think, here's my b term. It should be graphed at a positive 3. Hey, it is. And my slope is x, and if you guys remember x equals 1x, which equals 1 over 1x, which means we're going to rise up 1 and run over 1. Let's see if that goes 1. Oh, hey, look at that. It works perfectly. So it's good. Once we learn slope intercept from it, we can kind of double check ourselves as we go. All right, so this goes with that. I'm going to erase it and do it again for this equation. So I have y equals 3 fifths x minus 12. So to find my x-intercept, I'm going to set y equal to 0. So I'll be left with uh, 0 equals 3 fifths x minus 12. I'm going to start by adding 12 to both sides. we are left with 12 equals 3 fifths x. I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3 fifths, 5 thirds, and 5 thirds. Those are going to cancel out, we'll leave just x. And 5 thirds times 12 would give me 20. So my uh, x intercept would be at x equals 20. Yep. And for this one, my y intercept would be uh, y equals 3 fifths. 0 minus 12, so I put 0 in for my x, so y equals 0 minus 12, and so y equals 12, or negative 12, sorry, because it's 0 minus 12. So if you saw me hesitate, I, my graph's not going to work perfectly out for uh, this equation, so I'm going to change my scale, so each one of these is by 4. So if x equals 20, it's going to be the x-axis at 4, so let's make this 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, it's on cross right there. And for this one, my y is going to be negative 12, so negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 12, that would be right there. And I'm going to connect those dots to form my linear equation. So there is the graph of the line of y equals 3 fifths x minus 12. Um, Please don't let this confuse you right here. I didn't realize that I didn't have the right graph on there, so I just changed the scale to make sure that it worked for me. Um, when you guys do this, you won't have that, that issue. Um, but here's two more examples of how to find the intercept. So once again, to find the x-intercept, plug y, 0 in for y. To find the y-intercept, plug x in for 0. Okay, let's do maybe a couple more. We'll call it quits. So now I have 3x plus 2y equals 4. To find the x-intercept, I make y equal 0. So it would be 3x plus 2 times 0 equals 4. That's going to multiply by 0, which leaves me with 3x equals 4. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x equals 4 thirds. So I know my x-intercept is at 4 thirds, so that's about 1 and 1 third, so just short of 1 and a half, right there. To find my y-intercept, I set x equal to 0, so that's going to be the same as 3 times 0 plus 2y equals 4. That's multiplied by 2y equals 4, divide by 2, divide by 2 y equals 2. So I know I have a line that intercepts the y-axis at 2. And I'll just connect those two dots. And there is the line of the equation 3x plus 2y equals 4. Let's move to this one over here. 
Let's start off by finding our x first step. In order to do that, we have to plug 0 in for y. So we left with x plus 4 times 0 equals 4, which is the same as x equal, well, not x equals, sorry guys, x plus 0 equals 4, or just x equals 4. So I know my x uh, intercept is at 4. I'm going to do the same thing for my y, but plug x in for 0. So I'm going to have 0 plus 4y equals 4, which is the same as 4y equals 4. Divide both sides by that coefficient. And I'm left with y equals 1. So my y-intercept is at 1. I connect my lines, or connect my dots to form a line. And there is the linear equation of x plus 4y equals 4. I think that's all you guys will need for this lesson then. Uh, this will be for Friday, so make sure you do it. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me, email me. Um, but besides that, hope you guys had a first good first day of e-learning. This is your second day. Hopefully you guys have a great weekend. Um, enjoy some time off before we have a full week of e-learning. Wish we were here. Miss you guys. And I will talk to you guys soon. See you.